This past summer, as festivities for Canada's 150th were ramping up, the Quebec government issued a remarkable document titled Quebecers, Our Way of Being Canadian. It is a noteworthy new contribution to the long, complicated conversation between that province and the rest of Canada. Jean-Marc Fournier is Quebec's minister responsible for Canadian relations and the Canadian francophonie, and we're pleased to welcome him to our studio tonight. Bienvenue. Le plaisir. Un plaisir de faire votre connaissance, monsieur. Merci de l'invitation. And that's about all my French you're going to get tonight. I'm that's sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure there has ever been a minister with your title before, ministre des Relations canadiennes et de la francophonie canadienne. You're right. So how exactly do you see your mission with the government of Quebec? And it's part of what is all about in that, that policy. Uh, we don't intend to just limit our relation from government to government. Uh, we think that what Quebec has to do is to uh, express his view uh, in all the country, of course, in the political sphere, but not just with government, with opposition, with senators. I was with Quebec senators uh, on, uh, on Monday morning of this week, um, and not just with the political sphere. We've got to uh, propose our vision of the future of the country, uh, to uh, every citizen, to uh, uh, environmentalists, to business people, to people in, in, uh, in different groups. Why now? Well, the, the question is good. Um, I think we are at a point after, let's say, the last 50 years where Quebec has changed and Canada has changed. And, and certainly the, uh, the 150th anniversary was, was a moment to say, where are we? You know, when it's an anniversary, it's a time to, to say, look at the past and look at the history and look at what we are. But it's, it's more than that. It's a possibility, an opportunity to look into the future. What do we want this country to be? And what is the place of Quebec in it? Uh, it's an old debate. I, I would say that it's a taboo since 20 years, but do we have to stay in the taboo if what we want is just to be closer together, to have a better country? And, and what I say is to have the possibility to make Canada a model, even for the world, as how we can manage to respect diversity, individual diversity and collective diversity. And this is what this platform is about. Let's read some of the platforms so that uh, people can have a better understanding of what you're saying. Quebec remains free to make its own choices and intends to assume its own identity. It also wants to affirm both its identity as a nation and its attachment to Canada. Quebec will continue to participate in building the Canadian political project while resolutely making its own specific contribution. With a strong national identity that is deeply felt and wishing to have this identity duly recognized, Quebecers choose to build their future with other Canadians. We are Quebecers, and this is our way of being Canadian. This is fascinating language, I have to tell you, because this is obviously not the Sovereignty Association or the separatism of René Lévesque, but it is not the way any other Canadian province would describe its relationship within Canada as well. So help us understand this. Why does Quebec still feel a need to regard itself differently from other provinces within Confederation? Because that is what he is. That's the only answer we can give. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the feeling or the sense of the federalism uh, 150 years ago, uh, and you've got to go back to uh, McDonald and Cartier, you, you will see that it was a project where we were talking about two founding people or two nation, and, and, and certainly at that time we were forgetting about uh, First Nation, and we should have not, but it's time to bring them now in. But, but that feeling of having a country built by two nations, by collective diversity, it was two people different, but wishing to, to build something together. It's still the way we see that in Quebec, always. The rest of Canada uh, does not. No, uh, if you look at the history, you'll see that uh, around 1930, uh, with the economic crisis and things like that in, in very many countries, the interventionist state took place, and, and Ottawa did that. Uh, correctly, as, as others. In, in Quebec, we had to wait up to 1960 uh, with the Révolution Tranquille to... Quiet to, revolution. To, yeah, quiet revolution, to go in that kind of uh, state interventionist. But if we go back to 1930, it has started there, intellectual proposed that, well, you know, Canada and the, our federation was the result of a law, a, a London law, uh, and, and so there's what, just one nation. And, 
but it's not the way Quebec see it. So what we are say, saying is that really, what's the problem if a group, let's say here Quebecois, but you can say that for First Nation too, mm -hmm. uh, feel that they've got a strong sense of belonging to, to their collective community, but at the same time, because this is, this is the reality, I have a sense of belonging to Canada. So I have a particular sense of belonging and a common sense of belonging. Do we have to choose? In the past, the question was, you have to be that or that. You cannot be both. And you want to be both. We are. You are both. And we are not the only one in the world. And the question is, how can we see the future? Is there a place for, in, in this type of world, you know, where migration in every country is, is higher and, and there is no more frontier? How? No, no border. So, how do we will manage to, 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 to vivre ensemble, being together? How we can give a place to people that are different, but wish to be part of the adventure? And, and I think, and we think, and it's not just for Quebec and Canada, there are many in the world, many people propose that kind of plurinationalism federation, but a way to give a place, just accept the fact that we can adapt ways of going to common objective. We are not saying that we don't want to go to common objective. We have to go it to go to it with our ways of, of doing it. Is it something like you know we call asymmetry? When we talk about asymmetrical solutions, sometimes asymmetrical, asymmetrical yeah. Yes. So, sometimes it's seen that it is a way to get out. In fact, it's a way to get in. It's a way to say we've got a common objective, we agree. But there's a way we want to take, a route that we want to follow. It is not completely the same. For many reasons. One, of course, is that the fact that there's a majority francophone in Quebec that we cannot find in the rest of the country and the rest of North America. And because of that, because we want to maintain that, well, we will have, we'll use other tools. That is not saying that we don't have a common objective. We've got the same. So asymmetrical solutions are a way to be closer together, to have real equality. Mm -hmm. I do want to get a better understanding, though, and I think I'm right to say this. Separatism feels like it's at a very low ebb right now. The forces of separatism, the Bloc Québécois is no longer the force in Parliament it once was. The Parti Québécois is no longer the government of Quebec. Obviously, the Liberal Party is. I'm going to say something heretical here. Does Stephen Harper get credit for the fact that separation appears to be a, a, a non-issue in Quebec today? I'm a politician. I will, I will maybe surprise you, but um, it's not just about politician. It's not that. So you will not, I think we'll, you will not find one politician or another or a group of politicians. In fact, it's society. It's change in society. Okay, but made how it. much credit is he entitled to? Well, I think, I think that if you want to go to the numbers in favor of separation, other, other things, you, you'll have to go to the changes that Quebec and Canada have, have known since 50 years. Go back to 19, 1960. You know, you were speaking French, you were a second-class worker. Mm. Uh, we didn't have a, a possibility to see the future. Our ambition was not possible to achieve. So, there, so change were made and laws were, were passed. So that now we are 94.5% who speak French in Quebec. Five years ago, 94.4. 20 years ago, 93. We're just going, there's confidence now. It's a, a big change since the okay, 60s. I, and that means something about the, the wishes for separation. And it's still there. Je comprends, but I want to I bring you in on the Harper angle here. Because, yeah, I know that. <laughs> you know, uh, he left you alone. I mean, he had the Conservatives under Stephen Harper had very few seats in the province of Quebec. And he kind of left you alone to do your own thing. And I wonder whether Quebec, as, an, as, as a nation, appreciated that. And he's entitled to some credit on that. And, and if you want to look at it, because I just want not to say just that, but if we want to concentrate on that aspect, I would say that you're right on the point that the, the, the Conservative and Mr. Harper were uh, in, in a position to say, well, uh, we will have less intervention. And, and, and certainly, they were not going in an aspect of conflict. And that found favor in Quebec. And, and, and certainly, we don't want conflict. We, we want an agreement. We don't want, we don't want to fight. But I can also say that sometimes we had to fight even then. And today, it's, we are not always fighting, but sometimes we fight. Let's go to one aspect. Let's talk about health. In the health uh, discussion with Ottawa, we, were, we, we didn't agree about the amount of money Ottawa was, was giving. Other provinces were in the same sort of position as us. But on the asymmetrical position, 
Ottawa didn't, didn't say, did accept it. They said, at the, at the beginning of the process, so we didn't have to fight for that. So what I'm saying here is that things have changed. In Quebec, things have changed that create a new kind of spirit in, in, about, let's say, separation and the way we see ourselves in Canada. And in Canada, things have changed. We just look at the discussion we had now about our relation with United States and Mexico with the free trade. Mm -hmm. Well, in 20 years ago, when that was the deal was made, provinces and Quebec were not part of the deal. We were not negotiating. But since then, we had the free, the, the, uh, free trade with Europe. And at that time, provinces and Quebec were around the table. And now we are with the federal counterparts on the negotiating thing. So, so provinces are part. So in that aspect, collaborative federalism is playing its role right now. Let me ask you about, a, uh, this is a terrible expression, asymmetrical yeah. federalism, but it basically means all the provinces are equal, but they're doesn't mean they're treated the same. They can be treated differently. So that's the way you are say, about treatment, but it's, it's about how the tools they can use to sure. achieve the same goal. So let me ask you about that. For example, Quebec uh, would like it assured that you get three judges on the Supreme Court. Every province has control over health and education, but Quebec would like to have some control over immigration as well, and etc. Explain to a mostly English audience why it's important for Quebec to have additional or asymmetrical powers compared to other provinces. Let's look, uh, let's start with the three judge. It's not, it's not new. In fact, it's, it's there <laughs> since the beginning, 150 years ago. Uh, and, and why? Because uh, in 1774, not yesterday, before 1867, uh, it was recognized, our civil law was recognized. And we are the only province with, with a, a civil law uh, coming from, from France, in fact. Uh, and, and, and that was accepted, recognized at that time, and still is. And that's the reason why we've got to have on the bench uh, a, a bench that can judge uh, laws that they know. So that's the reason. So you'll find that when we look at the situation of Quebec, you go back to the beginning. The fact that at that time there were two founding people who were saying, and, and, and it's not just two founding, it's because it was to culture, different uh, judicial instrument, and we had to adapt the constitution to that and adapt our, our, our way of seeing the, uh, the federation. And do you it's, think there's a recognition and, of the fact that Quebec needs different treatment in well, the rest of Canada? Well, the fact is that Quebec is different, mm -hmm. but in some aspect, you know, and I heard that uh, very often, you know, Newfoundland will say, well, for me, I'm in a different situation. Mm -hmm. And we need a federalism who is able to look at the situation of everyone and try to adapt. What's in, not for, in for Quebec, in the, the, the speciality or the, the specific aspect of Quebec are certainly is one difference that you don't find er elsewhere is the majority speaking French in a North American continent mm -hmm. where it's English. And we've, we've got to use tools for that. When we build the, the, the state and, and the, the, uh, let's say, the instrument that we've got uh, to make, to govern Quebec uh, in economy, to change the situation where we were a second class worker or, or in social health, who is our jurisdiction, is the jurisdiction of province. It's just normal that over the years, because since the beginning we have that jurisdiction, we have developed differently than others. So when we say this is the way we are, we need to be able to use those tools. But you know about that discussion in health, we were all talking about services to give to the elderly. Mm -hmm. we, it was everybody were having the same, the common objective still is. We can talk about asymmetry, but it's not just, it's not being apart. It's being closer together okay. by the what's, tools we had. What's not working in the Federation today that you wish worked better? Okay, I'll give you a number. Uh, you refer to the, the title, Quebecois, are we of being Canadian? Quebecers, are we of being Canadian? We feel strongly to being Quebecers. That, that's the feeling in Quebec. Sense of belonging to Quebec is very strong. 75% said, at the same time, I've got the sense of belonging to Canada. So it's bold. Look at that number. You can say, well, it's, it's high or it's low <clears throat> because we, we wish that it's 100%. In, in the 75%, you've got different level. It's not everybody who feel a strong sense of belonging, but a certain sense of belonging. What, what, what do I mean, that mean? That means that if we want the country to be better and every citizen to find that it's his place, we've got something to do. What is the thing we've got to do? It's to address the thing that Quebecers want to be received and see as Quebecers, 
as being member of what they call an inclusive nation, where in that nation, they see First Nation. In that nation, they see members of the English-speaking community. In that nation, they see newcomers coming to Quebec. So they, see, they want, and it's not, almost, it's not there yet, we've got to work on that to be more inclusive. But we want Quebec to be inclusive as we want Canada to be inclusive. We think that the future is where diversity is a big value. Individual diversity, collective diversity, we don't have to oppose it. We've got to merge it, to recognize it, so people see, well, in Canada, there's a place for me. Let, let me give you one example. When we can speak French in Vancouver or in Toronto, when we hear French, when we see the numbers of youngsters going in immersion class, that means something. That means that Canada want to open a door to French, not do, to do shut Quebecers it down. Do care about that? Well, they've got to <clears throat> learn about it. That's, that's part of the difficulties. <clears throat> uh, being on a show to talk about that, it's very difficult. This is not the topic in Quebec. We've got I've, to push the door for that. I have often been told, Minister, that Quebecers care a lot about the status of French inside Quebec, but in the rest of Canada, they don't give a damn. I'll, I'll give you the, the real picture. French for Quebec, French in the world. Not sure there's French in the rest of the country. That is, that is the way people see it. So we've got to make them discover that there's French, and not just there's French outside of Quebec, but there's a new kind of, of legitimacy given to French by the rest of Canadians. I'll give you one example. Uh, not last year, but the year before, we were at the Conseil des Fédérations in Yukon. And all the premier of all provinces and territory were there. They accept and adopt and they talk. First, they talk about French immigration. First, they talk. It's, it's something new. And after the discussion, they accept to have a target of 5% of French immigration in the rest of the country, not in Quebec, 5%. Yeah. It's more than the, 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 the uh, maternal tongue. And, and that means something. We are not there yet. We've got to develop tools to go there. But that means that it's OK. It's OK mm. to speak French. And I think that there's a reason for that. There's 200 million uh, people who speak French in the world. In 2050, it's going to be 700 million. Canada is probably one of not so many countries who have two windows. One window mm -hmm. on the English world and one window on the French world. If we open both windows, look at the advantage we're going to have on economic field, cultural field, environment, mm -hmm. social field, diplomatic field. Mm -hmm. Look at the possibility Canada have if they discover the advantage that Canada have that other country doesn't have. Okay, that leads me to this. <clears throat> 36 years ago, we repatriated our Constitution with a Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and Quebec, admittedly with a separatist premier at the time, René Lévesque, did not sign on. In order for, to, for Quebec to achieve the aspirations it has, does it eventually have to formally, officially, put its signature on that Constitution? And if so, how do we do that? Let's, let's talk about the, the first question. Uh, was it important for all the other premier and the prime minister at that time? to sign the Constitution? Was it important? Yes. OK, so that answered your first question. If it was important for them, it's important also for Quebec. That okay. answered that. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what do we have to do? We don't have to go back to the way we did it uh, at that time and, and, try, and, and what we try with Meech, you know, having all the Premier and the Prime Minister in the room for a week, uh, trying negotiating something. People don't want a negotiation. They want a constatation. They want, they want an agreement. They, they, they want people to accept, not to force it. So what we've got to do now, it's not, not going in the same direction. We've got to learn from that. And what we have to do is look at what we, what's happening. Canada has changed. Quebec has changed. We are now able to start a new dialogue, a new conversation about how we see the future of, of Canada. We are ready to talk about the future of is Canada. Is the rest of Canada ready to listen? Well, we hope that they will not just listen, that they will talk. It's what we've got to do is a dialogue, not a monologue. We've, we, we want to be Quebecer, as as Quebecer, being Canadian. So that means that all Canadians can talk about the future of the country, what's their place, what they see. Mm. And you know what? When we've got meeting with uh, our colleague cabinet from the Ontario government, when Madame Wynne came to the Salon Bleu of the National, National Assembly last week, a first in 150 years, never, never a premier, a prime minister, 
came to the, the Salon Bleu. Do you know what that means? That means something about the acceptance, about the will of talking to others, that, not just us. You have, to agree, you have the agreement of two separatist parties who are in the assembly. They accept. Just curious, how much of her speech was in French? Uh, I, I would say uh, 40, 40%. 40 percent? Yeah, I would say, uh, not, not to say 50-50, but not, mm -hmm. not n near that. And was, near that, that. was that OK for the members of the National Assembly, yes, that of most course. of the speech was in English? Yes, of course. It was OK. Yes, of course. OK, just a checking. Applaud, applaud by uh, every just side. Checking. Uh, Let me read one more excerpt from, uh, we're down to our last couple of minutes. Yeah. I want to do one more excerpt from here. Quebec intends to increase its presence on the Canadian stage to make its voice heard and ensure that its concerns are better understood. This will be achieved through active involvement in the university sector with business and social groups on traditional and social media and everywhere Quebec's voice must be heard to project the vision and goals of its government. I want to ask you one last question. A former liberal politician in the province of Ontario once said on this program that Quebec had become so much maître chez nous, they were so masters of their own destiny right now, it has become such a distinct society within Canada that if it actually separated from Canada, would anybody actually notice? What's your view on that? Well, uh, it's very opposite. Uh... It's going back to the uh, understanding that some people have about the two solitude. You know the expression. It's an old expression, and it's sometimes we try to uh, define our relation Quebec with the rest of the country as two solitude. In fact, there's many solidarities between us. We just don't look at it. We just don't see it. Let's just look at the relation Ontario Quebec since some years now the trade in hydroelectricity, the new deal that we've got about uh, artificial uh, intelligence, uh, the, the, the fact that both provinces are with California on the uh, cap and trade uh, in is environment. That is that because you're a liberal and we have a liberal government in Ontario? Is that no, why? No, no, no. You it's know, beyond partisanship. No, it's beyond that. And, and take, a, take another, another thing. Um, we are too solitude. How come there's so many business in Quebec who sell parts, automobile parts, to Ontario, who are supposed to be the only province about, about cars? Uh, how come in, in Ontario there are many people who are working in the field, producing tools or equipment for our airplanes built in, in Montreal? Our economy is like that. We sell more to New Brunswick than to France. We sell more to BC than to China. That means something about solidarity. Madame Nutley in Alberta made a, a press conference two years ago about his new environment in, environmental policy in, in energy. And on the, on the scene with her, you know who were there? Stephen Gilbo, who is a, 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 somebody very important in the environmental lobby in Quebec. Why was he on a stage with the Premier of Ontario, of, of Alberta. Well, the reason is because people talk, because there's solidarity, because people of environment in Quebec talk to others. And together, they have built a help, a public policy made by the government of Alberta. Do we have to close our eyes to the fact that we are closer? We just want to be closer together in the fact that just respect who everybody is. What is the, the, the talking that we've got with First Nation? We just say, well, they are what they are. We want them to become more Canadian, feel that they are accepted in, in the country, and we want them to build a sense of belonging to Canada, right? Mm. This is the same thing with Quebec, with a collective diversity as, as a First Nation. They want to be Canadian. Why not accept it? Why not accept the fact that it is the same thing? Different tools, different solution for one and the others. Of course, there's different situation. But philosophically, what is what 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 we're talking about? We're talking about diversity. That is a value of Canada. Well, individual diversity is recognized. Let's open the door to collective diversity. We will welcome more the individual diversity of that group, having more a sense of belonging by everybody, a common sense of belonging to Canada, the country will be stronger. And if we do that, look at other countries in the world. Look at Spain. Maybe there's a way for us to bring our sense of belonging closer, not separate. Be an example for others. I think Canada Potential. can be that. Why not? You know, I, I should say, there are not many English politicians who could go to Quebec and do an interview in French um, on a Quebec television station. So we are grateful that a Quebec politician came to the province of Ontario to do an interview in English. Uh, merci beaucoup. Un grand plaisir de vous serenement, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. Thank you very much. À la prochaine fois. Jean-Marc Fournier.
Quebec's Minister for Francophone Relations within Canada. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.